Is there something in common in every culture that creates this need for God? Well, I think uh, anyone who has an experience of mystery at all knows that there is a, a dimension, let's say, uh, of the universe that is not that which is available to his senses. There's a wonderful saying in one of the Upanishads, uh, when uh, before a sunset or a mountain and the beauty of this or of that, you pause and say, ah, that is participation in divinity. And I think that's what it is. It's the realization of wonder and also the experience of tremendous power, which people, of course, living in the world of nature are experiencing all the time. You know there's something there that's much bigger than the human dimension. And our way of thinking in the West largely is that God is the source of the energy. The way in most oriental thinking, and I think in most what we call primitive thinking also is, that God is a manifestation of the energy, not its source. That God is the vehicle of the energy. And uh, the level of energy that is involved or represented determines the character of the God. There are gods of violence. There are gods of compassion. There are gods that unite the two. There are gods that are the protectors of kings in their war campaigns. These are uh, personifications of the energy that's in play and what the source of the energy is. What's the source of the energy of these lights around us? I mean, this is a total mystery. <laughs>